Hey everyone, it's a big day today. I believe it's the 60th day of the 40, uh, 360 fibers. 60, day 60, right? And uh, it's the 40th day for the uh, 40 day challenge. So congratulations to the guys that got their 40 days uh, in. Um, in our read, last read for the 40 day challenge, my read for today is Matthew 5, which um, is awesome. Uh, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to do it justice. I'm recalling some of the, I remember being really confused about this chapter for a long time, and then my pastor spoke on it probably, I don't know, it must have been a year ago, maybe eight months, something like that. So I'm going to just kind of comment on some of the stuff I remember about that as it's kind of opened up to me then. So here we go. Uh, Matthew 5. Seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I remember just really being confused about that for a long time. Poor in spirit. You know, to me, it just... Um, I, I, I attributed poor with weak, and I don't know why, I just did. It's just like, I didn't get that, you know. Um, and then it was explained to me, and I thought it really got my mind around, was when you think of yourself as poor in spirit, and you think of being poor, when you're poor, you really have nothing, you know, financially to bring to the table. You can't, yeah, I have nothing for you. I have nothing to offer, you know, financially, okay? Because we're talking here now, poor in spirit, right? So we're approaching God with humility and complete humbleness, saying, I have nothing to offer. I am zero. I got nothing to bring to the table. Everything I'm going to have, I'm going to be dependent on you. And when you come to the Lord with that kind of meekness and humility, um, when you're that poor in spirit, what does he say? Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Then in verse 4, it says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. And it was described to me that this kind of mourning um, isn't just your everyday lost somebody or something kind of mourning. This is mourning over our sin getting to the point where you are so broken hearted over your sin and I know for me and a lot of other people that that moment where you um, get completely broken over the reality of your sin it's a morning that it brings you to the point of tears where you realize how offensive you are and your sins are to a holy God so what does it say about those that mourn in such a way Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Okay, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. So are you hungering? Are you thirsting to the point where if you came through a desert for two days with nothing to eat or drink, where you are just, you wouldn't even look at how clean a cup of water was when there was handed to you, you would drink it. Not that we want to drink dirty water, you get the point. Where you are thirsting so much. You thirst, are you thirsting and hungering for righteousness like that? Where you want to devour it, you, you want that righteousness. You want that to be every part of your thought, life, your your you know, every part of your life, do you thirst and hunger for righteousness? Because when we thirst like that, Jesus' promises will be filled. Okay, verse 7, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Are you seeking God with a pure heart? Are you seeking to do His will with a pure heart? Or are you just giving them a piece of it? Are you giving them the whole thing or a part of it, a piece? Are you trying to hold a piece back? 
Because blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice that it doesn't say blessed are those who are persecuted. There's more. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is, is the kingdom of heaven. You know, there, there are those out there that love the Lord, but in some cases, their, their shock attack, their shocking, their shock value, I know a particular radio show host, I know him personally, and sometimes I think his shock value that gets him attacked is just that. It's because of his the way. It's not. It's not for righteousness' sake, and, and this is just my opinion on it. You know, because I see, I hear the show when I hear what he's doing, and I and I've told him. So if he sees this, he, he's not going to be surprised that I said this, and I, and I don't really care if it if he sees it because it, it's I you know I, I say it like it is you know, and I don't believe that kind of persecution is being persecuted for righteousness' sake. So there's a difference between being persecuted and being persecuted for righteousness' sake. Okay, verse 11. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. And um, you see that happening. You know, there's no, there's no doubt. When your you're old friends that are still living a certain way. I'm, and I know my situation isn't unique. I've seen this happen. So I can speak from experience where I would hear things that, you know, certain people are saying, you know, um, when I first got saved and I removed myself from some of the things I was doing. And that's just, that's just small potatoes compared to real persecution. So whatever, it's not a big deal. But the point is that they're, they're speaking evil against you falsely again. Jesus says, for my sake, okay? Verse 12, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, sometimes um, for me, I forget that. The part where it says, great, you, for your reward is great in heaven. Um... I don't know. Sometimes it seems like you're just you keep you're moving, you keep moving forward, you're moving forward. You're in the Word every day, you're praying every day, and you're seeking Him more. And um, sometimes you just have to stop and go, "Wow, look at my eternity is going to look like. I'm glory bound instead of being hell bound. I'm now glory bound. I, we can't even get our mind around that. But sometimes we got to stop, and for me at least, to go. Do I believe the promises of his word? And because if I do, I got to look to verses like this and go, great is my reward going to be in heaven for belonging to the king. Okay, that's all I got for today. Uh, God bless you all. Peace.